Here we're going to develop uh, quantum mechanics based upon postulates. Uh, that's uh, essentially what it is. You have to take these things on faith. It's like going to the Church of Quantum Mechanics. We have to take these on faith. Uh, postulates cannot be uh, derived from any other uh, source. That's where we start. They're axioms. So we have to start somewhere. This is where we're starting. Now the advantage of uh, doing and making these postulates, of course, is that we can now use with these postulates, use the postulates, formulate a theory of quantum mechanics, and then predict experimental results. And the fact that we can get uh, good experimental results that cannot in fact be explained by classical mechanics makes these, okay, we, we make these weird postulates, but they're justified because they explain experiment, uh, we can develop a theory that explains experimental data. So with that, just let's uh, go ahead and start uh, the first postulate. There'll be four postulates. The first one, every physical observable A has associated with it a mathematical operator A. Okay, and uh, usually we'll put a little hat above the A here. All right, so that's a little hard to grasp at this stage, but um, let's just take it on faith. The operator gives the only possible results of the measurement of the observable. So remember we talked about quantization. Quantization means you can't have any old energy, for example. You can only have certain energies. So this, these operators will, uh, as we'll show how to do in just a minute, give only the po those possible results of the measurement. Any other measurement that is not given by this operator cannot be measured experimentally. All right, so what is an operator? An operator is um, a mathematical formalism that it operates on a function and gives you another function back. Okay, so what does that mean? So suppose our function f of x may is a 2x. So uh, what that means is take a value of x multiplied by 2. Now let's define an operator a, or I guess I'm using o, an operator o as two times. So if we operate on this function f of x, this means that we have two times, that's the operator, operating on this uh, function 2x. So this now is 4x, and now this is the new, uh, new function g of x. Now operators in quantum mechanics oftentimes contain derivatives. So let's define an operator as take the first derivative. All right, now let's operate with that operator on this function f of x. That means take the derivative with respect to x of this function, which is 2x. So this is equal to 2. And now this is the new function, g of x, which doesn't depend on x. So operators operate on functions to give you another function. Sometimes the operators are fairly simple, like multiply by 2, and other times they're a little more complex, meaning take derivatives, for example. All right, so this means that um, there's a, a mathematical operator associated with an observable. What kind of observables, observables can we have? Well, for example, position. So there's an operator associated with position. Another observable, energy. There's an operator associated with energy another observable, momentum. So there's an operator associated with momentum and so on. And this operator somehow contains secrets of nature. In other words, if you operate on the function, which we'll talk about in just a second, then you get only those possible values of that quantized quantity, only those values that you can actually measure. Our first postulate of quantum mechanics was that there was this mysterious operator, mathematical operator, that somehow would give you the values, the only values you can measure in an experiment of some um, observable. Well, here we're going to give a little more information about that. How do you actually get those, va uh, those values? Well, you have what's called an eigenvalue equation, and this is a function which we'll uh, learn in the next postulate. It's called the wave function, but just let's say this is a general function which somehow represents the system. If you operate on that function and get the function back again times a constant, that's called an eigenvalue equation, and that constant is called the eigenvalue, and um, f of x, that function is called an eigenvector, or uh, we'll we rename this eigen function. All right, 
its own. Uh, let's just rewrite that. We have that operator, which I think we're using the symbol O with a little hat above it, an operator on some function f of x, and we have yet to specify what this function is. If you, and this is a special function, if you get the function back again times a constant, this is the value of observable. So the collection of values here of A that you can get with different functions is a collection of observables, the values you can actually measure of, say, for instance, position, momentum, energy, things like that. It comes from this eigenvalue equation. These are called eigenfunctions. And these values of A here that you get are eigen values. And this whole thing is called an eigenvalue equation. All right, so that's important. Uh, an eigen, um, this eigenvalue equation will give you only uh, the possible values that you can uh, measure for an observable. Okay, that's postulate two. We have two more to go. Here's the third postulate of quantum mechanics. The third postulate is for every system there exists a state function which will denote by the capital Greek letter psi that contains all the information about the system. All right, now that's kind of weird. Again, we're taking these on faith. Uh, this uh, this uh, state function is called psi. We'll call that the wave function and psi is a function of the spatial coordinates and psi can be a complex number. All right, so what that means is, well, we'll see that what that means in a minute, but uh, let's just see. So we have now psi is um, called a wave function and this represents a uh, represents a system. The system might be, for example, a particle. So in line with de Broglie, we're representing a system consisting of particles whose motion and energy want to determine, for example, as this wave function. And the wave function can be a complex number, as we'll see, uh, or it can be, um, or it is a function of spatial coordinates. So this, um, this wave function, psi, is a function of spatial coordinates. If we specify the spatial coordinates in Cartesian coordinates, this is a function of x, y, and z. So now, the third postulate, we have this mysterious uh, wave function here, which somehow contains information about the system. All right, we're just going to take that on faith. We'll see in a little while why that's important and what it, uh, this wave function really means. But for now, just say uh, sort of abstractly, all right, we have a wave function psi and it contains information about the system. The last postulate of quantum mechanics, the fourth one, is the equation of motion of the system is given by uh, how the um, wave function changes with time. Now recall from classical mechanics, the goal there was to, uh, to obtain equation of motion of a system to only predict how things change with time. Well here, this is the equation of motion of a system. This predicts how the wave function, which we defined in postulate three as containing information about the system, how this wave function changes with time. So i h bar, uh, i is the uh, square root of minus 1, is equal to the how the derivative, um, the how the wave function changes with time, is this h here times psi. So what is h? Well h is the Hamiltonian, so h is the Hamiltonian operator. And recall that the Hamiltonian in classical physics, H without that operator hat there, is the total energy. So, and we said that every observable has with it, associated with it, an operator. So total energy is an observable. We can actually measure that. And therefore, the uh, operator corresponding to that observable total energy we'll call the Hamiltonian operator. 
So if we write this as the equation of motion with that complex number there, that uh, i, i h bar, how the um, wave function changes with time is h times that. Now what we'll be working with in Chem 351 in this introductory physical chemistry course is the time independent uh, time independent um, so in fact we don't have the equation of motion and what we'll find out just in a second is h uh, the the equation there which governs the system is h psi equal e psi psi here is the wave function uh, which corresponds to a system e is energy and h is the operator associated with energy so if we take that here let's just write that and this will sort of uh, cement in some of the earlier postulates of quantum mechanics, h psi equal e psi. All right, so this is the form of the equation. So if you want to learn about how the wave function evolves with time, uh, take advanced chemistry, uh, physical chemistry course, say chemistry 451. But for now, just let's uh, not worry about that, and we go here to the time independent part. All right, so remember we had one of the postulates was every observable. has corresponding to it um, a operator. So here the observable energy has corresponding with it the operator. The operator is the total energy operator. And then observed or the possible values that you can observe for say energy are given by the eigenvalue equation H psi equal e psi so um, e is the only possible values typically you get more than one value only possible values that can be measured and this is the wave function of the system sorry That's the wave function. Now, as we said, the big picture of quantum mechanics is you take this wave function, which is a wave, which corresponds to the system, and you put constraints on it. When you put constraints on it, that means you can only have uh, certain values of the wave function. The constraints are uh, incorporated into the uh, solution to this equation here. You put constraints on it, you can only have certain energies uh, if this is the um, equation we're using. Uh, the constraints means only certain values of the wave function, which means only certain values of energy, and that's incorporated into this eigenvalue equation. You can't have any old energy if you constrain this wave. You can only have energies that come out of this eigenvalue equation. And we'll develop this idea in a little while much more fully.